Welcome everybody to the Genesis Mindset. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about what is a tropa on Pulse Chain. So this is going to be an Atropa for Dummies episode. So I'm going to break everything down for you. The very basics of what a tropa is, how the P-stables are related to a tropa, how the R bots are related to the Atropa ecosystem, who the dev is and the story of the dev, as well as how you can actually participate in the ecosystem, what kind of things you can do, and then all the tools that you're going to need to actually participate within the ecosystem. So with that, please share this video far and wide because it's going to hopefully be the base video for everything anyone ever needs for a tropa. So first of all, as always, this is the Genesis Mindset. It's Mindset for Investing, Trading, and Life. So this is really just about mindset. It's my personal opinion only. This is not financial advice. Don't go and buy anything based on what I tell you. I'm going to emphasize that throughout the episode as well. So what is a tropa on Pulse Chain? A tropa for dummies. So let's actually look at what the Atropa ecosystem is. So very first of all, the first thing that you need to think about with a tropa is, yes, a tropa is an individual token, but it's an ecosystem. So the Atropa Pulse Chain ecosystem is a network of interconnected tokens attempting to create a truly decentralized financial system, replicating all the instruments of a traditional financial system such as checking accounts, backing systems, trust, legal tenders, securities, minting, so on and so forth. So everything now that is happening on the Atropa ecosystem is an experiment for this actual procedure to unfold. So there's going to be tokens that are being created that are actually just experimenting with this idea, creating different kinds of securities, making sure that ones fail, ones succeed. So everything is basically a theory. And now the theory is actually being tested and it looks like it's being highly successful up until this point. It is also an experiment in liquidity bonding. So anyone who's familiar with Richard Hart and the Richard Hart ecosystem knows that one of Richard Hart's talking points is Hart's law. So Richard Hart came up with Hart's law, which is when tokens are bonded by liquidity, they move up and down together. What actually happens with the Atropa ecosystem is the liquidity bonding is done in such a way that the whole entire ecosystem moves together. And what it does is it creates a set of burnt liquidities that actually creates a floor with the objective of creating a 100% cryptocurrency collateral for the P-stables on Pulse Chain. It also is trying to minimize any flaws, any faults, any scams, any rug pulls. So all the fears that we experience with cryptocurrencies are being alleviated by the Atropa ecosystem and its fundamental design. So the P-stables, this is just three of the P-stables, DAI, USDC, and USDT. So I'll go into that in just a minute, but this is how it actually started. So the first three tokens that were created, so first was the fork. So the fork had DAI stablecoin. Maria purchased X amount of DAI stablecoin, created the Atropa token, and then burnt some of that supply, the majority of the Atropa token supply with all of the DAI stablecoin, then created the down token, then also burnt more of the Atropa supply with the down token, then again created legal and burnt 100% of the legal token with more of the Atropa token. And in the end, all the dev had was a very small portion of all the tokens that were created. And what this actually, what actually happens there is when you burn the supply, so let's say I create Let's say I create a token with six suppliers. So I've got six here. So I create this, I create this token with six, six tokens. Then I release it to the market and I'm the dev. So I have all the tokens. Now, what actually happens is people come in and buy these tokens. So let's say someone comes along, buys this token. Now there's a market. So this token has been purchased and there's a market. So let's say these tokens have been, let's say there's a Tropa, six Atropa tokens being traded with Pulse Chain. I've traded my Pulse Chain for that Atropa. And then there's Pulse Chain in the pool and the Atropa still stays in the pool. But basically now I can sell this. And these also can be sold into the market for Pulse Chain. What actually happens with burnt liquidity is if I take half the supply, so this is what Maria did from the start, the dev, took half the supply or, or thereabouts, whatever the math was, took half of the Atropa supply and burnt it, which means he cannot sell that token. It actually gets put into a liquidity pool where he cannot sell it. So the only thing that it can do is be bought. So it go, it's in the pool. 
it stays there, but it cannot be sold. It can only be bought because nobody actually owns it at that point. It's actually, it's actually in the liquidity pool as burnt supply. Now, what people are actually doing with the Atropa ecosystem is they're following suit. So a lot of people also buy tokens and then they'll burn some of those tokens. So then they're reducing the sell pressure. So what this does is create charts that go like this. And I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. So now back into the presentation. So there's going to be a few slides, then I'll go through all the tools. So the P stables and the bots. So first of all, the P stables, there's DAI, USDC, USDT, FRAX, and USDP. These are the main P stables that were forked with Pulse Chain. LUSD was forked, and a lot of people have been asking me about this lately. And I would say LUSD is not included as this. Even though it was forked as a PRC20 on Pulse Chain, I think it's basically by virtue of its supply. Because its supply is in the trillions, the others are in the millions and the billions, they are more easily able to be pegged and stabilized to a dollar. The LUSD, I would suspect because of its huge supply, it's not possible. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but if there was a possibility, maybe people could look at some of my other videos, a previous video here about how a tropa started. And actually, maybe you could experiment and be a benevolent player and actually create your own token and see if you can experiment with the LUSD and see if you can actually basically undergo the same process that the dev has done with the Atropa ecosystem. So I think the LUSD is there. It can be used for that, but yeah, no, no financial advice there. So the dev doesn't actually know about the MakerDAO. So MakerDAO is where you get DAI from on Ethereum. So it's actually attempting to create collateral for the P stables through the Atropa, the whole Atropa ecosystem. So the whole web of tokens. So there's hundreds of tokens and through this web of liquidity, that is attempting to create the collateral backing for the P stables. The dev doesn't know anything about the maker DAO and how it's been manipulated, only trying to do it from the perspective of the Atropa ecosystem. So whether or not he can peg it or whether or not maker DAO pegs it, no one knows. This is still up for speculation. There are some good resources out there and I will link as many resources as I can from people like Decentralize Me, um, other other YouTube channels as well, which I'll go through towards the end. You can actually have a look. There's lots of resources all over YouTube. And so all these tokens, these peace stables are liquidity bonded and therefore they actually move up together. So as of today, PDI, DAI stablecoin on Pulse Chain is almost at the one cent mark. So today is the, <laughs> it's 420. <laughs> it's 420 on the 6th of April. So it's the 6th of April, 2024, and it's just below one cent. So I'm hoping if you're watching this in the future, let's say in a year's time, you're just learning about a tropa. I certainly hope it's a lot faster than a year because I don't want you to miss out. But even if you are watching this a year later from the 6th of April, one thing that you need to understand about the Atropa ecosystem is there's constantly tokens being plugged into the ecosystem. There's hundreds of tokens at the moment, but it's basically an ecosystem where any new token can be plugged into it and get lifted up by the liquidity bonding. This is the magic. It's a forever, infinitely growing, infinitely scaled ecosystem, which is what makes it so profound, so revolutionary, so unlike anything that's ever been produced before. It's really true DeFi. There's actually no R bots. So there's a, there was a lot of speculation in the early days, the Atropa bots, the magic bots. There are no R bots. The bots just run on Pulse Chain. We don't know who runs those R bots, but the Atropa ecosystem utilizes them. Also, it utilizes the fact that Pulse Chain itself is extremely cheap. So you can do liquidity bonding, you can do liquidity pools, and it basically utilizes the power of the bots to propel the, the whole ecosystem. And I have got plenty of videos on the P stables as well, if you do want to get into that. And again, I'll try and put some resources there. But if you go to those, there's going to be resources there as well. So who is the dev? So the dev is Maria Rahel, the 414 dev. So the reason why it's 414 is because the wallet address that creates all of these tokens ends in 414. So that's why we call them the 414 dev. I mean, even that 414, it's just, it's just perfect, man. It's not like 278 or 39. If it was 369, it would be cool. But 414, it's like a very, it's just awesome, man. It's like, Mwah. and it's James. So I, 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 he hasn't, he didn't, everybody knows the public name by now, but you know, it doesn't really matter, but it's Maria Rahel. It is a guy. He has, he has doxed himself. Uh, he basically created monitors and grows the Atropa ecosystem of tokens. So he is the dev. 
and he runs the IRC chat log. So there is a chat log that everything gets um, communicated to people through. So you can actually follow those chat logs uh, through the Telegram. You can follow, uh, I'll basically, what I'll do is I'll link the Atropa uh, Telegram. So you can go to the Atropa Telegram and then people there will direct you to the chat logs. Then obviously recently he went fully public with three interviews in Zurich. So I'll also link them down below. So they're on KCB TV. So have a look at the interviews, see for yourself what kind of character he is. He only just released, he only just um, basically released his public face to the world. Uh, like It was probably about last week now. So and that really just caused an explosion in the Atropa ecosystem and the P-stables. Okay, so how what should I do? How should you participate? So first of all, Maria wants to keep this elite. So what you need to do is you need to learn. So I'm going to give you all the tools that you need to get started, but it's really up to you to learn. Go to all the, go to the telegrams, learn on the telegrams, interact with the communities, ask the right kinds of questions. Do not ask, what should I buy? Even for me, please do not send me DMs and say, hey, Steve, what should I buy? Um, uh, if I start to get a lot of those questions, I'm, I'm going to politely say, I'm going to politely direct you to this video and for you to make your own decision. And there's a very specific reason for that. The reason for that is there is literally, again, hundreds of tokens. I only own like maybe five to 10 tokens. I don't want to tell you what I own. It's up to you. I don't want to shill my tokens. I think all the tokens are fantastic. There's different ways to play it. So you could play the cores and the core tokens are the Atropa token, the die token. So again, the peace stables aren't, they're not directly linked to the Atropa ecosystem. The Atropa ecosystem saw the opportunity of the peace stables and has tried to create an ecosystem for those peace stables. They're not actually created by the Atropa ecosystem, but they are associated. And so this is why people consider die stable coin basically one of the one of the core tokens of the Atropa ecosystem because the bond, the, the burnt liquidity between Atropa, Atropa and Dai is gigantic. And then there's also Bear, Teddy Bear, which I believe is the premier meme coin, which I believe is going to be the premier meme coin on Pulse Chain by the end of this bull run. If not, if not, the premier meme coin for the whole entire cryptocurrency market by the end of this bull market. I do believe it has that potential, but I do believe certainly there's a very high probability it will be the number one, the number one meme coin in all of Pulse Chain. So you can either play the cores; those are like the three cores, or you can buy them all. Some people just literally every new token that is launched, they will just buy every single new token. They'll they'll spend a little bit of Pulse on every single new to token, or you can just buy your favorites, whatever you align with, something that resonates with you. If you like a certain kind of community, it's completely up to you how you choose to play it. Then. Just experiment, observe, provide liquidity. Providing liquidity is a big part of this ecosystem. The passive yield, learning about the liquidity maps, buying, joining the telegrams, engaging with the community, really just getting involved. The right kinds of questions are, how do I go about learning how to do this? I am happy to teach or to share the knowledge that I have that's been shared with me in relation to how I can teach you how to fish, but I will not teach you what to fish. Do not ask me again what tokens to buy because I'm not an expert. I'm not a financial advisor and everybody's strategy is different. My strategy requires me to be extremely much more risk, much, much more risky because I'm trying to, I'm trying to change the whole entire world. I'm trying to start with Australia, then I'm working my way over the world. So I need as much money as possible to be able to do that. And so I believe. In order to do that, just holding on to the core Richard Hart tokens, this is going to be able to multiply the wealth, in my opinion, a lot better than just holding on to those core tokens. But those core tokens still represent a huge part of my portfolio. Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Inc., huge part of my pulse, my portfolio. Then the mindset part of it. Don't be greedy. Do not be greedy. This is not about extracting liquidity off each other. This is about being a team. And honestly speaking, more than any cryptocurrency ecosystem that I've ever been a part of, even the core Richard Hart tokens, I believe this represents the best kind of team that I've been in. There is no 
because there's so many tokens, there's no competition between the tokens. There is a little bit of competition. This is natural. This is human greed. It still comes to the surface, but it's much more about working as a team, holding hands and moving forward together than it is about, hey, just come and buy my token. That's also why I don't really want to tell you what kind of tokens that I have. There will be things that I talk about. For example, I have been talking a lot lately about Mantisa because this is something where Maria has said this is going to be a big opportunity. And this is really a part of engaging with the community because Maria really, basically, you can front run Maria in everything because Maria will basically tell you what they're doing and then everybody does it. So there was the BFF token and I'll show you that in just a moment where basically he was telling everyone what he was going to do and his plan for it and, it and it skyrocketed. So really learning how to pay attention and I'll do my best to convey the information as it comes up, but know this, I'm not doing it to shill my tokens. Nothing about what I'm doing with this ecosystem is about shilling my tokens. I don't want you to buy my tokens. And if I do want you to buy my tokens, it's not to buy my tokens. It's because I believe that for you to buy those tokens is in your benefit. Please understand that about my character. I also think, very importantly, be humble, be grateful, and be accepting. I really want to emphasize the mindset. Don't be greedy. We are a team. Be grateful. The gratitude is what's allowed me to really see this whole ecosystem in the first place. It's opened my mind up to what the Atropa ecosystem is. Having a humble mind has really allowed me to not be fixated on my perspective of I'm just going to hold Pulse Chain until the end. I opened my mind up. I kept an open mind. I saw the opportunities there. I investigated for myself. So this is one of my first Atropa videos or my first few from like from six months ago from this point of recording. And I really did some massive, massive deep dives. And I had to humble myself to the world to really learn. And it was a very... Um, it was a very mentally stimulating mentally stimulating part of my life, but also very difficult because it was very hard to unravel and unwind. So I really would encourage you to learn for yourself and just be accepting. Be accepting of how things are going. It's an ecosystem. Things are going to go up. Things are going to go down. Doesn't matter if your token is not pumping. It will, it will eventually pump. Who knows? Or not financial advice, but really just just keep adapting, stay in the flow, stay with the movement of the market, stay engaged with the market so you can really get a feel for it for yourself. That's the best way to do it for you to take charge of your own mind, for you to take charge of how things are actually moving. And again, the reason why I want to emphasize this is because I'm not here to shill my bags. The Genesis mindset, the whole point of this channel is to prove to the world that with the right mindset, with a grateful mind, with a humble mind, with an accepting mind, with that mindset, with the mind of God that is within the universe, Allah, however you want to call it, whatever you want to refer it to, by being one with that existence, which is within you, you can achieve anything. That's the whole point of my, my channel. And I have 10 year, 20 year goals for this channel. I want to prove through this channel, all the things that I'm going to do with the world through having the mind of truth, the mind of sincerity, having a genuine mind. And I think people really resonate with my genuineness. I think I could, I really already have the trust of the, of the community that you can really see, you can, you can hear, you can feel the sincerity of my words. I'm not here to shill my bags. I never have been, I never will be. The only thing that I will shill is please find the mind of truth. You must find that before you die. It's the number one most important thing that you have to do before you die. That's all that I care about. All this cryptocurrency stuff, I want us all to win. Don't get me wrong, but this is just a vehicle to achieve that main goal of this channel. So please, I really hope, I really hope that you find that. It's the most important thing. It's such a wonderful way to live. I was walking around the shops today thinking about how I'm going to present this episode and I'm just so full of gratitude for the world. I'm just by myself walking around the shop. I don't have a wife. I don't have kids, but I'm so grateful to the world, so grateful to the universe, just living like this, just being able to share these things. If only you knew the things that I knew about this. And it's like, if only you knew the things that I knew about the universe, it's oh, all right, deep breaths. Okay. So here's a good place to start. So I've, I've tried to write, I'm going to be doing this as a three-part article on my blog. So I'm going to link this here. So what is a trope of pulse chain? What is PDI? Who is Maria Rahel? So I've uncovered that a little bit here, but this is more in depth. So if you really want to read, so the way that I like to learn 
is I like to read, I like to hear, I like to see, I like to do it for myself, I like to learn for myself and really engaging all the different senses. That's how I learn. I don't just learn by just hearing it. I really have to engage all the senses. That's just me. So I have provided this here. You can also follow me on Twitter because I do lots of tweets about the Atropa ecosystem. I try to do long form. I try to do short form. I try to do visual. I really try to show you how this thing works because I'm so passionate about what this represents for the future of humanity and the kind of avenue that this can actually bring into the world in terms of the financial system because the financial system as it is, is broken. I'm not saying that this is going to be like, oh, everyone's going to be trading on the Atropa ecosystem in a hundred years time. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this is definitely, in my opinion, something that is going to lead in the direction of what the future world of finance is going to be, because at the moment, it is not a fair system. This system that I'm seeing unravel is a is a new financial system that is much more fair for the everyday person. It gives everyone an opportunity. Okay, so you can go through here and it goes into a little bit more detail, links to some of my old school videos. So this is like one of the old school videos that I did where yeah, there's going to be mistakes in there. My understanding has developed over time. Okay, so now an ecosystem of tokens. So again, this is what you need to understand with the liquidity bonding. Everything is bonded by liquidity. So I'm, I've, I don't normally have the charts this small, but I want you just to see. So this is a sample. So what I do is on deck screen, I create multi charts. So I have all these different kinds of multi charts to help me understand the relationship between the different tokens. This is where I really started with the Atropa ecosystem. I saw, hang on, there's tokens that are going down against this. There's tokens that are going up against this. There's tokens that are going sideways. There's tokens that are minting. They're all doing different things. They all have these different functions. But in general, they seem to be moving up and to the right. That's the main thing that I'm seeing. So this is Atropa. This is PDAR. Their charts are very similar. This is Teddy Bear. Also another very similar chart. So now with these three here, this is what I mean when I say liquidity bond, uh, burnt liquidity. It creates a flaw, a forever flaw. How does that actually happen? Again, in every other chart on the planet, because it's really only connected with one liquidity pool. So for example, if I type in, so I'm just going to type in uh, POM because I have done a video on this just to emphasize this. So POM is, uh, this is, there's where is it? POM, uh, Pepe on Mars. Here we go, Pepe on Oh, no, it's not there. Anyway, it might not even be here anymore because it's absolute garbage. So um, Pepe on Mars. So anyway, even this, Pepe but blue. Stoner Pepe. <laughs> Stoner Pepe, 420. All right. Stoner Pepe. So Stoner Pepe only has one liquidity pool with Solana. What does that mean if it's got one liquidity pool? It goes up and it goes down. And that's it. Game over. Goes up and goes down. If the whales choose to bless it, maybe it's going to go up a little bit more and you might ride the coattails of the whales. What actually happens with the Atropa ecosystem is because of this burnt liquidity, what they actually do, instead of the chart going up and down, this burnt liquidity, that liquidity that goes down is liquidity that's being sold to the market, so to late buyers. But what actually happens is instead of selling it into the market, it's burnt, which means it's locked away in liquidity, which means the floor is created here because this much of the supply is forever locked away. That means the only way that this can move in any direction is if buyers actually come in and buy it and push the price up. So this is how the charts keep moving like this. So then what does this mean again? My prediction and the way that I'm seeing it unfold and the way that it seems like the Deb's thesis is, these charts are going to continue to move up and to the right, creating new floors and just keep going up, just like the stock market, going up and up and up. So really, we are so early. We are so early. We've had our first major dip. Basically, we took off again around the middle of December. So we had like a bear season from September to the middle of December. And I do believe we probably are going to have a bear season coming up very soon for the Atropa ecosystem. My prediction is around the one cent mark. So at the moment, we're just below the 0.9 cent mark. Um, so I think once we hit the one cent mark, I think we're going to see like a little bear season. So a little, a little down, take profit in the Atropa ecosystem. So like I said, there's all these different tokens. There is so many. This is only just a few, but you can see all the charts. They move up and to the right. And again, here we go, BFF. So this was an example of how you can actually, uh, how you can follow what the market is saying, what, what, what the dev is saying, 
You can actually listen to what people are saying. So I've got videos on BFF and, oh boy, this is still one of my big regrets. So BFF, um, Maria was basically saying, BFF, we want to get it to 8K. So I heard it here. Oh man, just looking at that price and I'd seen it and I was like, oh, it's just had this huge like green candle. But what I didn't know was the suppliers. All these tokens have different suppliers. So BFF only has 777 supply. Atropa only has, oh, not only, but Atropa has 1, 1 billion, 111 million, blah, 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 11111, right? So that's something that I didn't really realize. So this is where learning helps a lot. So I could have bought it here, but I didn't. And again, I saw it pump. I was like, oh, God damn, now I'm going to get into it. So I think I got it here. So I still got a good price. I still got a good price. It was, It's an amazing price. I got it around there. But when you really think about, Maria was saying, we want this to get up to 8K. So the market responded. So that was a, ooh, you know, that was actually, to be honest, actually, I because I'm pretty sure it was like a 20X when I was looking at it. So I'm pretty sure even it was like down here, it was something ridiculous, right? So this is what's actually happening. So we're going towards this 8K mark. So these are the kinds of plays that are happening within the Atropa ecosystem. If you learn, if you participate, if you engage with the ecosystem, then again, you get these kinds of beautiful, magical charts. So again, any other ecosystem. So this is, this. I have a particular affinity with TRSI. Any other chart on any other chain, once it gets to this level, it's dead. It's game over. But because now this gets locked into a whole bunch of other tokens, let's say TRSI is, is locked in with, maybe, maybe it's locked into like 100 different tokens. So let's just show you how this actually works. Uh, so let's say it's bonded with a tropa, uh, legal, down, teddy bear, die, um, BFF, so on and so forth. So what actually happens as they move up, it's dragging this up. It's pulling it up. So this is the magic magic of the Atropa ecosystem. And this is where I'm excited for EHEX. I don't think EHEX is dead. I think it's going to live. I believe Maria knows what he's doing. And I believe EHEX is going to be saved. And that's also going to bring a hell of a lot of eyeballs to the Atropa ecosystem. And if you have actually come here from ehex and observing ehex in the atropa ecosystem hello i'll welcome you okay so again these charts just get dragged up these charts which look dead on any other chain they go up and it's just it's a wonderful wonderful blockchain so then you have the p stables so these are the p stables i like to track the p stables i like to look at the way that they're bonded together so this is usdc with uh die so at the minute this is the ratio but at various points, they were one-to-one. -one, and I do believe they will get one-to-one -one again. At the moment, the market is really valuing DAI, really valuing DAI. So it's really uh, like USDC is basically half or 60% um, of the price essentially of DAI. So I like to monitor this, just monitor how the P stables work. They all seem to gravitate towards the one-to-one. -to -one. So this is USDT, USDC. And eventually, hopefully, if it gets to a dollar, some then this should be one to one. So this, these, in my opinion, are great opportunities for providing liquidity. If they all get to a dollar, doesn't matter where you provide liquidity in here because you're just trading dollars for dollars. So I set up some liquidity pools today with USDC and Dai. Okay, so I also like to monitor the main Dai stable coins and uh, the main P stables. So this is Dai, and I'm tracking the one cent, the ten cent, and the dollar mark. As you can see, these lag behind. Then you have the other two, which I haven't tra tracked as closely, USDP and FRAX, but they're doing exactly the same thing. Nobody talks about these tokens, but they're doing exactly the same thing. You could buy a lot more of this. And if you believe that they're all going to get to a dollar, you're actually buying these at a premium. So you're getting a better rate. So USDP is actually the best rate at the moment. So PAX dollar is actually the best rate at the moment. So if you had a you're basically getting an extra 60% by buying this or 50% by buying this compared to die. If they peg at, at the peg, then, you know, bingo. But most of the market values P die for a variety of different reasons. But me personally, I like to just follow these three because these three are the ones that I've seen mentioned in the chat log. So I follow these three. I've never seen Maria mention these, but all I know is because of the liquidity bonding, these also move up together. Even though the market values this and it buys this the most, the R bots are equalizing the price and pulling it up anyway. So in my opinion, they're all going to work. Then this is 
this is the addresses. So this is Sharia compliant. This is very important. And so when people ask, for example, what's Mantisa? So I'll have this address here. So this is one of the tricky things with the Atropa ecosystem, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. I'll have this here. So this is one example and I'll find. So here's the Mantisa contract. So now if I go here, the reason why it makes it difficult is because Mantisa, you can't actually type it here because this is the Mantisa token symbol. And this is the man, this is, it's like spelt in, uh, I believe it's possibly Thai. So Mantisa has a supply of one. So this is just some of the tokens. So there's, there's, these are some royalty tokens. So this list is being added and adjusted. This is a comprehensive list of every single token that's created within the Atropa ecosystem. So I'm going to share this as well. And so thank you to Sunny's Pub. So this is in Sunny's Pub. I'll also share Sunny's Pub uh, Telegram and the Atropa Telegram, the main Atropa Telegram. Now, this will show you the initial supplies. It will show you all the information along the chart here. So it's going to show you the token symbol. The problem is, again, you might not necessarily be able to find, like if I look for Mantisa, you're not going to be able to find it. So you need to like compare the two. So that's why Mantisa contract or... You know, you might hear Neptune contract, for example. I've personally never heard that mentioned, but there you go. You might not necessarily find it here because Mantisa on here will not actually have the word Mantisa. So this is where it is a little bit tricky to navigate. So you really need to do your research and you really need to understand what is going on. Now, the suppliers, the 666 suppliers, they, they perform uh, a unique function within the ecosystem. Basically, they can still go up, but Maria doesn't have any control over the over those tokens. The majority of the other tokens, Maria has more control over them. So basically buys and sells and fluctuates the system accordingly. Then follow the right kinds of people on Twitter. So PLS Pup. PLS Pup has created a bunch of different liquidity bonding maps. So this is just to show you the liquidity bonding. So it's not as simple as if I want to buy, I mean, a trope is simple. You can just buy with Pulse Chain. A lot of these tokens, so this is, again, there's hundreds here, hundreds. But here you're only seeing a small snippet of the supply, a very small snippet of the total tokens. In order to buy, for example, scissors, you, you first might need to buy Pulse Chain, buy some teddy bear, and then buy some scissors. And you can see the one, the three, so that, that means they're the thickest pools. So Treasury bill, if I wanted to buy treasury bill, I would probably first need to buy, again, Pulse Chain, Teddy Bear, then treasury bill. I might not be able, I, I should still be able to buy directly with Pulse Chain, but the pools between Pulse Chain and tre treasury bill will be so small that you're going to get hit all the time with slippage. So the best way is to do it is to go through these thick pools like Teddy Bear, Atropa, and Die. And from there, then you can start interacting with the rest of the ecosystem. At the time of recording, this is why I keep talking about Mantisa. Mantisa is a very small part of the ecosystem, but Maria is basically talking about this being the next stage of building out the ecosystem. At the moment, there's hundreds of tokens all connected to Atropa, which are connected to USDC and DAI. Whereas this is the up and coming part of the ecosystem. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to do the numbers of Atropa, but it does mean that there's going to be a lot of opportunities there for the liquidity to flow through. So as a liquidity provider, I think Mantisa is going to be a golden opportunity. Then the next thing that you need, go real DeFi. So go real DeFi, save this website so you don't get scammed, you don't click on the wrong things, and you're going to want to use the Explorer. The reason why is you're going to need to learn how to navigate yourself around the Atropa ecosystem to confirm things for yourself. So for example, Let's just go here. Let's go to a Tropa. So Dex Screener. I've got Dex Screener here. And again, I'll show you the liquidity bonding. A Tropa. I forgot to show you that before. So with, with that peppy one, there was only one. Look at a Tropa. Pulse Chain, Die. Uh, this is now careful because there's there's another Tropa now on DGen Chain. It's got nothing to do with this Atropa. Um, USDC, Actly, PulseX. Um... Uh... Uh, USDT, this is really just to name a few. It's not going to show them all. Teddy Bear, uh, there, there's a lot, okay? So on, in any, excuse me, in any case, when you copy the pair address, just to verify, copy the Atropa pair address, you always want to confirm things on Pulse Explorer. So then it's going to bring this up and you click Atropa 
Okay, that's a tropa. The supply, someone burnt the supply <laughs> against six, 69. At the moment, there's 9,200 holders. So now if you actually, it's lagging a little bit, but basically it will show the contract address here as well. So I'm going to click that and it will show you who the contract creator is or it should do. Uh, what happened there? So why is that not showing me the contract creator? I think it's maybe going to show it up here, but there's a lot of lag. Gosh darn. So in any case, it's going to show you it's going to show you who the contract creator is. Let me try and get a different token here. So teddy bear, copy the address. And again, if you really want to verify, the, the multiple ways to verify is either in this way or going to the spreadsheet, looking for teddy bear. And anything here is the Atropa Dev Deployer. There is also the Atropa Dev Alt. So that's, the, that's probably the Trebizond. So... This is the 414 wallet, and then this is the Trebizon wallet. So the Trebizon also creates tokens. So anything that's being created through these two addresses, they can be trusted. Now, has this loaded yet? Okay, here we go. So when you type the contract, you can either click here and it will show you the supply, or you click the bottom one to see who actually created it. So it'll tell you the token name, the creator, 414. Bang. Okay, we got it. Then I'm actually going to click into it and then it will show me the supply. It will show me the holders. Okay, so here's the supply of Teddy. It emulates Shiba Inu. Here's the holders. So it has the most holders out of any of the Atropa ecosystem tokens. And when you go to holders, this is how you learn about the liquidity pools. So this is the holders. So the top holder is the Atropa address. So Maria, 414. Then this lucky duck, DE48, has 4% of the supply. He has 2% of the supply. So when you see these, this is somebody's uh, wallet address. When you see this, this is a contract. So what does that actually mean? I'll show you. This will show you the different liquidity pools. And this is how you navigate yourself around the Atropa ecosystem. So as this loads up, what I'll do is as that... Oops. So then as this loads up, I'll just click them all so they start to load up. This is what we're talking about here. So when we look here, oh man, come on, stop lagging, baby doll. So when we look here, this is going to be the thickest liquidity pool between Teddy Bear and whatever the whatever else is in that liquidity pool. This is the second thickest liquidity pool. This is the third thickest liquidity pool. So when we look at these liquidity maps with Teddy Bear, the thickest is through Pulse Chain. The second thickest is through PDI. So I imagine we're going to see Pulse Chain and PDI, but we'll confirm that. And then Treasury Bill number three. So if we go here, oh boy, so there's a lot of tokens in this particular one. Normally there's only two. So you're probably going to see, uh, is there a wrapped pulse in here? Okay, so the thickest actually at the moment is the one with DAI. So the so the best way to get it is with DAI. And what does that mean? It means you're going to minimize your slippage. And I'll show you an example of that. And I'll show you that right now, actually. So let's go copy. Uh, the, I've still got the teddy bear dress copied. So if I go here and I want to buy, uh, so I'll just show you how this is going to work. So with teddy bear, so I've copied the address. It might be here, but otherwise you copy it here. And then it's already added by me. Now, sometimes if you want to add this, add this to your MetaMask, you just click this button. Sometimes it's going to give you an error. You got to make sure that you delete some of these token symbols because you can only have a max of 11, 11 symbols. So this is too many. So just delete this and it will work. And it's going to be the same with all the P stables. So all the P stables already have the logos and they're already here. Holy smoke. So this is my, this is my man, Sonny the detective. What a goat. So he gave, I mean, look at this. That's that's a year's income in like a day, man. That's a day. So when this pegs, if this pegs, if you're watching this in a year, two years time, that's how much money Sonny just gave away to, to creators and influencers and builders. So love you, Sonny. Absolutely love you, man. Honestly, that's like a day's, yeah. Like the, the and again, the gratitude, man, everything just comes to you if you have a grateful mind. So Teddy Bear, 
Now, at V1, V2, so if I want to buy, let's just say I want to buy 50 million teddy bears worth. So you can see the slippage here. Whoa, okay. So you can maybe go to V2. Okay, better. So V2 has a thicker pool so I can get my full amount of teddy bear. Not going to be on V1, so be careful of that. On the contrary, if I go to, let's just use hard, for example. Now, if I want to sell my hard for teddy bear, oh, oh, so somebody actually already has set up some, well, because it's sunny. All right, so that's a bad example. So sunny would have set up, uh, let's, I've added a whole bunch here. So, uh, doo -doo -doo. oh man, there's, they're probably all going to, okay, future. This is this is one from Internet Money IO. Let's see if they've actually, if someone, oh, so people really do. Get, ah, here we go. So here we go. Look at this slippage because there's not a big enough liquidity pool that you can actually swap those tokens into, whether it's V1 or V2. And I'll emphasize this, this again. So let's just say if I'm in, uh, let's say, uh, hegemony, hopefully I can get, I'll get hegemony. So I'll, I'll Alt F hegemony and I want to buy a teddy bear. Hedge. Hegel. Ah oh, man, where's hegemony? Okay, all right. So this is why again it's pretty it's pretty tricky. Uh okay, wait, let's see TSFI. How's TSFI bonded to Teddy Bear? I just want to make this very clear. So TSFI, all right, not not okay, perfect. So TSFI, let's get the contract address. TSFI. Boom. TSFI, so it's not really directly related or bonded with Teddy Bear. So if I've got TSFI and I want to sell that for some... Oh, gosh darn. All right, so it's, it's still it's still good. Uh, okay, so someone has created some thick liquidity pools and Teddy Bear is a bad example because it's, it's so thick. But if I use... Anyway, you get the point. If it's a more obscure token, it's 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 going to be less... You're going to get more slippage, so you're going to have to go through the right liquidity routes. And the way to do that is to check these maps or to confirm the liquidity routes for yourself. So Teddy Bear, this is another liquidity pool. Here's another one. So these whole liquidity pools have really been thickened up with a whole bunch of things. So this is really quite interesting. So this one is Treasury Bill. This one is uh, the predominant one is a Tropa, so a Tropa and Teddy. So there you go. Okay, so I hope that's made it very clear. And I hope that's made this very clear with the with how to actually add it to your MetaMask, how to actually trade the different tokens because of all the unique names. Now, what I'm going to do is let's actually minimize this. I'll make this into a group so I can just show you, create tab island. All right, now let's get on to the final part. Some extra content creators. So young DJ Khaled, DJ Khaled Crypto, he does at DJ Khaled Crypto. I'm going to be putting his link here. So this is in no particular preference. I'm not preferencing anyone in particular. I really like his vibe. I really like his character. Really nice guy. So he does a lot of content on Atropa and PDI. Also Crypto Neptune. So Lovell, shout out to Lovell. He also does a lot of content. And then the verse is actually, he did some amazing PDI videos back in the day. He's also done some Atropa. So these, these guys give me a bit of information about the Atropa ecosystem as well. Um, but honestly, probably I think uh, this channel is probably the that goes into it the deepest with the Atropa. But if you, I would strongly recommend listening to other guys as well to really expand your knowledge because when you hear it from different sources, when you read it from different places, it's going to deepen your own understanding of what the ecosystem is all about. Just listening to the same source can, you know, can kind of get a bit monotonous or it, it yeah, it just it just cements it in your mind in different ways. Some is also started to talk about it. Your friend saw me, uh, Access to Live started talking about it. I saw Crypto Heartbeat today as well, just the other day, basically have a revelation about what PDI is. I don't really think he's connected with the Atropa ecosystem just yet, but people are starting to see. And again, this is April 6th, 2024. If you're watching this in a year's time, I think the whole blockchain is going to be knowing what Atropa ecosystem is. I really have the faith in that. So now with that, I hope that's cleared everything up. I hope that's cleared what the Atropa ecosystem is. I hope it's, if you want more resources, really go deep into my channel. I am going to create an Atropa Pulse Chain playlist. 
I don't know if I can order it. If I can order it, this will be first. And then I'll go through basically how I, in the order of when I created those videos. So you can actually follow the progression of how it was unraveled and how I actually discovered it piece by piece. Piece by piece. I'm not going to say like watch it all, but the more you watch, the deeper the knowledge is going to cement into your mind. So with that, because this is a Genesis mindset, again, I, I always try to end on some kind of book reading. And I really want to end on this particular book reading. And I'm actually going to show the, the passage on the screen as well. So you can actually really read this and cement this into your mind because I feel very blessed to even know what this Atropa ecosystem is. People really encouraged me to cover it a lot. People really brought it to my attention. And there was people who were in this before I was. So I'm so grateful to them. I'm so grateful to everybody who shared their wisdom with me. And I'm really just trying to give back to you guys. And I feel so blessed. We are so at the beginning of the Atropa ecosystem and everything is just going to move up and to the right. I really do believe that. Yes, we're going to have bear markets, but this is such a blessing to be on Pulse Chain and to be part of something that looks to be like a completely new decentralized financial system. System being the keyword. This is not a linear thing. It's liquidity bonded. It's a system. It's beautiful. It's elegant. It's perfect as it is. So I want to read this passage from my meditation teacher. And this is about blessings because I feel very blessed to know this. And this is what my channel is all about. So I'm going to play this cute little video in the background. So blessings will follow when he accepts everything without conflict, hindrance, discernment, and judgment. His mind's capacity is big enough to put everything in as he has no self and he is blessing itself. Whatever he does would be a blessing because there is no self. Everything will be accomplished. If you want to be blessed, you must change your mind into the biggest mind by throwing away your passive, narrow conceptions and behaviors through cleansing your mind. Then everything in the world will be a blessing. The blessings you wish for will come as a result of true actions. All right. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope it's made it clearer. And I wanted to end on that passage again because I feel blessed to even be knowing what this ecosystem is. I feel blessed to be conveying it to you guys. And also, this is really just the start. This is the start of this channel. And um, that in 10 years time, you're going to see the kind of work that I'll be doing because of the mindset that I have. I don't want to say how these things are going to happen. I do believe in my heart. I've had the visions of my place in the world, my place in the universe. And I believe that in 10 years time, Everything that I'll be talking about will be much more in the forefront of the consciousness of the world. And this is why I feel so blessed. The money that comes through this is all just a blessing to achieve these goals because it is the will of the universe for everybody to live as one together. This is the number one reason why we were born, so we can live together forever. You can go to heaven now while you're alive and you can live forever now. You can confirm heaven, paradise and bliss now while you're alive. And all of this is really just leading us there. So... Hexaco is coming in the future. Let's all be blessed and let's all head to Hexaco. Let's all head to Atropico, whatever it's going to be, Pulsico. We're all very lucky to know Richard Hart. We're all very lucky to know this ecosystem. We're all very lucky to know each other. So thank you very much, everybody. Take care and enjoy.